Welcome to the broadcast. That was Rest Your Head. That's what I've been working on the last few days and why I've been so quiet for those of you that have been emailing me and you haven't heard from me. I pretty much get started and I don't stop until I'm done or reach some sufficient point where I can rest. And already I hear at certain spots something's going on with the drums and the bridge part. It's it got quiet in the background. I know it's not supposed to be that way, so I've got to go back. I'll take a couple more <laughs> mix downs. We'll probably end up at number 40 or number 50 before it's all over okay so 
I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I'm going to make some adjustments. I have a video that I've already got together, but I'll wait for my uh, final mix on that to put to the video and then post that up on YouTube. Probably Friday I should have that up. Okay, so today we're going back into Plumegate. Uh, before I do jump into the documents, I uh, just want to touch base on a couple things because the trolls have gone into a frenzy pretty much since I've I blocked comments and, and shut everything on on YouTube. It's, and really what I do is kind of more like lecturing than anything else. You know, if there's something you really don't understand, you can inbox me or you can email me at hattrickpenryunbound at yahoo.com. And if I, you know, it's something I can explain to you, I'll be happy to do that. Again, keep in mind, I'm really a layman myself and I'm learning as I go along and I'm more ignorant than I am a knowledgeable in the area of nuclear power. So I don't um, portray myself as an expert. I'm just an investigative reporter. I'm really a musician, but uh, I guess since we're all going to get radiated now in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, it's no more time for play, like my song says. Together we must pray, and we better start doing some serious prayer. But prayer followed up with action, right? And that's educating people. Because the fact of the matter is this, you know, when you look at Obama's inauguration, all these sheeple out there, uh, Yah bless their souls, the poor bastards, they're totally brainwashed and totally indoctrinated, have absolutely no clue. You know, and that's how they're getting away with this. They control that huge herd, the first herd, as I call them, and as long as they, they have them under their sway, it's very difficult for us to get any positive change. So how do you wake the sheeple up? That seems to be the question, and, and what I've been saying is contrary to what Alex Jones and others say about this quote-unquote awakening, uh, there's no awakening. There's no awakening. Right, by the time I can wake one up, Alex Jones has put five to sleep. By the time I can enlighten one about nuclear power, Obama and Romney have put five to ten to hundred to thousand to sleep, and they have no clue. They think it's clean and emission-free and non-dangerous and wholesome and all that good stuff, right? So that's where we're at. If the awakening was actually happening, my neighbors still wouldn't be so ignorant. They, we, we would be out looking at the chemtrails and we'd be talking about things. Instead, I see Obama signs in their yard. So I know exactly where we're at. It's the television and it's our, our culture, a culture of corruption and a culture of ignorance. And that's where we're at. So do your prayers and then channel your energy into enlightening people. And, you know, if you look at the Jehovah's Witnesses, I'm not a big, you know, I have respect for them in that they, they get out and they go door to door. And for that, I give them a whole lot of respect. Do I want them necessarily knocking on my door about that? Man, maybe not really. But. If someone knocked on my door about Plumegate and handed me a little brochure, let's say they printed it off on their printers, just some, you know, pointers and then maybe a few email uh, address or, or uh, website addresses people could go to to get information from, and that would be something different. Knock on someone's door, giving them a, a DVD of some documentaries on chemtrails and maybe a brochure that gives them a basic breakdown on the on weather modification and, and enlighten them that way. If the Jehovah's Witnesses can get out and pedal their bikes around, they do it all the time. They come to my door every once in a while, uh, a couple times a year, I, I think. So why aren't people doing this with a, you know, how, what would it take to print off a 100, 200 brochures on your printer? You can't deliver them everywhere. Some places don't allow it, but my neighborhood, you can go through and leave anything you want on someone's door. It's wide open, wide open. We're not, wealthy enough in my neighborhood, okay, to keep the those people out from going door to door and trying to recruit me into their religion and what have you. But that's that again, how are we going to get it out there? Well again, YouTube, I want to talk about the troll frenzy. Well they're having a troll frenzy on YouTube because there's no comments open. You can't go in and so they go in every other thread pertaining to Plume Gate. They're in there doing their their troll work. Well that's why I shut my stuff down. I don't have time to maintain the threads of the trolls and I've got to read those thousands and thousands, literally probably 500 plus thousand pages of documents. I was joking with my friend Shazam, I will literally grow old and die before these documents are combed through in their entirety. But as you can see clearly already in the last week and this, what we're going to cover now as soon as I shut up and get back on track is, you know, there's some incredible insight even though there's some heavy redaction and, and you know, I might add in a satirical kind of way, NRC has made an improvement, ladies and gentlemen. They have actually made an improvement in the nuclear power industry, okay, and that is in their ability to redact, okay. They have a more higher tech form of redaction now. It's a nice block square with an even smooth, nice, uh, gentle gray in the middle of it. It's all even across and no uh, rough edges, just a, like a stamp came in and gave it a beautiful, nice, gray 
square stamp across it, right? So they are improving, if nothing else, in their ability to redact, okay? So don't be so hard on them. Compliment them on that and let them know. Great job down there at NRC and your new improved redacting techniques. Good job, gentlemen. Okay, now today, okay, and this relates to the trolls and other stuff as well because there's weird stuff going on in my computer and on my uh, HP blog and the uncovering Plumegate blog where I have a particular screen capture that keeps disappearing. And when I go to re-upload it, it simply won't let me. Well, if I go in, I bring the picture back up, and I re-screen capture and retitle it, I can upload it for a while. Then it booted it again, and I had to go back a third time, like third attempt this time. I got to pull it back up, re-screen capture. It has to be total fresh screen capture. And then I retitle it, boom, I can upload it. Now, how long it stays there, I don't know. Maybe the one today has already disappeared. I'll be drawing from my file from my computer just in case because, like I say, boom, 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 one, two, three, they all keep disappearing. My mom sent me an email to say, you know, son, I don't know if you know this, but number 92 or whatever it was, I've had to rename it now because 92 maybe is at the tag that they, you know, what's going on? Is this on purpose? Is this an accident? I don't know. I don't know. Well, here it is right here. Let me read this when I put it in as the first one. Or, or maybe if it doesn't show up as a first one again, now that I'm thinking about it, they already booted that one. Look at the bottom of the file on Uncovering Plumegate if you're following from the a Blog Talk Radio link. And it's either the first one if it's still there, but I think it's already been yanked. And if not, I just put one in the back as a regular screen capture, not in the gallery, and hopefully you can see it there. If not, we'll just continue to circulate it around because we all have it backed up on our backup file, so it's not going anywhere. Okay, you can slow us down, but I guess until you come and arrest us or something, we just have to work around it and keep reposting. But this seems to be a problem. The comments are being removed on YouTube. I mean removed from Miss Milky the Clown's threads. That's what I'm being told, that they just you know, disappear off of there altogether. So there is some maintenance going on, folks, some grooming and some farming going on out there that they're, they're doing. And this is one tactic to slow down the information. For Like I said, they want to leak it on their terms. They want to have their own websites that maybe even will give you some FOIA documents, just not a whole lot and nothing real damn neat like what I'm going to read you right now. Brian Sharon, this is the name of the character speaking. We don't, we don't know very much about the status is of the pool in Unit 4. You know, as they were saying before, you know, if it went dry and Unit 4 had a full core offload on it, so it was fairly, still fairly hot fuel. If that fuel melted after the pool went dry and started interacting with the, with the concrete on the floor, you know, the worst situation is it goes through, and then it's going to fall down to the rooms below, which is where I think the Taurus is. So it, it's really hard to tell, redaction, 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 but we can't really discern anything from, from that either. Bill orders. What about the dose rates on four? Brian Sharon. I'm sorry, the what? Bill orders dose rates and goes on down a couple more comments not really related. Interestingly enough, this one is a, a, a apt description and there's a couple more like this. That's why I'm wondering why this particular one. I've got a couple more where they talk about the full core offload melting down through the concrete. Okay, if you look, clearly last week we talked about by the 19th, by the 20th, and even prior to that, even I think on the children's thyroid doses to California on that particular file, which was days even prior to this, they knew that the spent uh, fuel pool on number four had been dry. The, uh, the Japanese were trying to say there's just enough water in there to see a shimmer in their flyover. And the NRC guys, Chuck Castor, I think, was saying he didn't buy that. I think he didn't buy that crap, something to that effect. He wasn't buying it. So they knew it was severely damaged, and if that's the case, as, as my understanding is, when the water leaks out, whether it all sloshes out from an earthquake or there's a crack or a hole in the side or whatever, it's a matter of hours. That, that's how critical it is, folks. Again, this isn't solar panel or solar technology. It's a matter of hours before you have a serious incident in that the fuel, especially the used fuel, is at temperature and very hot. And if it's not cooled sufficiently, it's going to begin its reaction. Eventually, it will melt down, as you're reading in this particular frame. It will melt through the concrete. That's how hot this stuff is, melt right through the concrete. What's beneath it? Well, <laughs> brilliantly enough, these spent fuel pools are put on top of the facility. Was to save space? Is it cheaper to build it that way? Folks, I think we just paid a really big a bill on this one. It might be cheaper to build them that way in the short run, but in the long run we can see the price that's going to be paid is indeed a very hefty price. So is this one disappearing because he says full core offload? 
fairly hot fuel melted down through the concrete floor worst situation. And, you know, I'm wondering today, I'm, I'm negotiating to get hold of some picks and, and see some picks of some of these Unit 3 and Unit 4, because my suspicion is after reading through these documents, uh, are they telling us the truth about Unit 4? I mean, because what we're seeing here is by all accounts, the fuel should have melted through. The NUREG manual even goes to that effect, and they state that in these documents. It would have melted through, through the concrete floor, and just the, the core corium or the molten, you know, molten metal is melting down through the floor. Onto the torus is the big ring underneath the reactor. So then be melting through the reactor. That's at least my understanding. And this keeps on going because there's nothing there to cool it. Okay, and it takes quite some time to reach uh, some stable level, so it continues to melt down, and then eventually you would get what they call the China Syndrome. Has that happened yet? Well, again, this is unconfirmed, but I saw a guy on RT, and when I watch Russia Today, it's with a grain of salt a lot of times, because they're doing social programming and damage control on there as well, but they claim that some of this has gone down far enough into the ground that it's hit groundwater and steam and whatnot's coming up through cracks as if it's reacting with the the groundwater. So clearly it's a major situation, a major mess. Do we have facilities like this in the U.S.? Certainly we do. More than one. More than one. And maybe one day we'll take time to go in and I'll break down for everybody the Mark 1s, the Mark 2s. Again, I could go over the Alvarez study that talks about the spent fuel that's being stored around the country that's already been used and it has to be maintained and then we have to dry cask it and then where do we put it and it's accumulating and it's a whole lot. Just like at Fukushima, the, the, the pool there that we're just talking about in, in four had a full core offload. And, and that's mixed amidst some that have never been used. Some of these fuel rods is my understanding. So those are safe if the water leaks out. If it's never been used, my understanding is you can actually hold that fuel rod in your hand. It's not going to radiate you. It's not so hot you can't hold it. It's not until they be, the reaction's begun that it, everything changes for the fuel rod. So please keep that in mind. Again, I'm not an expert, and, and, and you do due diligence to begin to study this yourself because life has changed now. It's almost 2 AF, two years after Fukushima, right? I remember back when one, two, or three... BF, you know, maybe 5, 6, 7, 8 BF, those were the good old days. 10 BF, those were the good days. You know, back into the 90s, wow, what were we, 20, you know, 21 BF, something like that, the good days, 21 years before Fukushima. We'd only had Chernobyl back then. That was gravy, wasn't it? We'd only had Three Mile Island. Oh, those were easy on us, weren't they? That was nothing. A few Down Syndrome babies here, a bunch of rooms full of deformed kids over there. Uh, wasn't enough, wasn't enough. Now we got Fukushima, and we're moving on to the next screen capture. Okay, 98 White House meet. And hopefully we get to this part in here today where they, you know, clearly they knew how serious the situation was. Clearly the president knew how serious the situation was. He was given worst case. The president had called for worst case uh, models. And, and, and to not have moved the Navy ships out of the way is absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. Because that's what I would have done. Marty Virgilio, Charlie Miller, are you there? Charlie Miller, this is he. Marty Virgilio, okay, Charlie, we're just waiting for Mike to join the bridge. Charlie Miller, okay. Marty Virgilio, the short story is we have a meeting down at the White House tomorrow morning at 8.30, and I'm thinking that either you or Mike ought to represent us based on my conversations with the chairman's office. Mike has got the duty here tomorrow on day shift and of Charlie Miller, so am I. Marty Virgilio, oh, our logs show that Mike is on at 7 a.m., Charlie Miller, no, I'm the ET, that's executive team. We'll have two people on at once. Virgilio, what you mean we have, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Miller, okay, Mike, female participant. He's doing it, and Mike is on, and the I have boxed here that White House meeting just showing you, you know, White House involvement. They talk about President's worst case scenario. So just want to make sure people are aware that on the run-up to Obama's election, and, and, and this particular document wasn't out, but plenty of incriminating stuff was. And you have to wonder why, since June of 2011, these documents have been out to a large extent. And no one's, I mean, Sandy Hook hoax? Yeah, gosh, criminal. You got YouTubers going. It's a, it's a frenzy. It's a Sandy hoax frenzy. But if each one of those people took that amount of energy and effort with Plumegate, oh, wow. Well, hey, maybe it starts circulating around some housewives would get a hold of it and get angry about it. Because that is what it's going to take. 
the the women of this country are going to save our butt. They really are because they have the children and they know about nurturing and loving and caring for children. They're not warlike and aggressive like the men seem to be. That was Krishnamurti on the beginning of my song there on Rest Your Head. And he's very much correct. He just blew my mind. I love that guy. He is a world teacher, no doubt about it. Okay, and he says man is outwardly, we seem to have mastered the, the world. And I would argue with him that I'd say, well, look at nuclear power, Krishnamurti. We haven't mastered that. In fact, that's a total flop, total failure. But man likes to think he's mastered the outward world. Meanwhile, inwardly, yeah, it's just as much an animal and a barbarian and, and, and aggressive and warlike and, and, you know, greedy and acquisitive. Everything, everything like this. Absolutely right. Okay, Virgilio. Okay, okay. Simultaneous conversation. Virgilio, all right, all right. Well, good. So you're already aligned to be here on day shift. Charlie Miller, right. Virgilio, so it's a matter of whether we have you here at the table or we send you downtown and find somebody else to sit at the table. Charlie Miller, okay. Marty Virgilio. And as soon as we get Weber on the line, we'll talk to him too. Mike Weber. Mike Weber's here. Marty Virgilio. Michael, good evening. Charlie Miller. Hey, Mike. Marty Virgilio, hey, sorry to bother you, and Charlie's on the line, too. Charlie Miller, hey, Mike, Mike Weber, hi, Charlie. Marty Virgilio, based on my discussions this afternoon, as I was coming in with the chairman's office, and Josh Baskin in particular, Josh has expressed, on behalf of the chairman, an interest that we engage at a high level, and I'm thinking that's either the office of the director or DO level, at a White House hosted meeting tomorrow at 8.30 to discuss what are or what should be the assumptions that we're using for the calculations on, on consequence. And I just wanted to, and let me quickly uh, let make sure you're, you're aware of what they're talking about, a source here, when, they, when they're discussing uh, sources for calculations and what have you, assumptions or sources. Okay, in this particular instance, they're using the word assumption or source. And that's, that they're, you know, they're looking to see what they can give for a model to the White House. And you'll find that they have a range of worst case scenarios. It's not just a worst case. There's a, a least worst case and then a little bit more worst case and then a little bit more. And then finally, there's one that's probably close to worst case, which to me, worst case, I would look at Fukushima Daiichi and say, well, we know five and six are, are stable. We know that for a fact. They got cooling. Things are running there. It's one, two, three, and four suffered the, the hardest hit. Let's look at those and let's say, hey, every reactor had a criticality. Every uh, spent fuel pool uh, had an, a source term emanation. That's your wor worst case scenario, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there can only be one worst case. Yes, only one worst case. You can't have a least worst case, mid worst case. Uh, uh, upper mid worst case, lower worst worst case, mid worst worst case, upper worst worst case. Okay, again, now we're really, you'll find out they're trying to get aligned. Everyone's swirling around with these different models and NARAC and Dipter and all this crazy stuff. There can only be one worst case, right? And if you really went by a worst case or one even close to it, folks, once you really study this stuff, it, it is an absolute crime that our Navy vessels were not immediately evacuated. You want to know why they didn't? Well, it's simple. Protect the nuclear power industry. Had JASCO done even more than a 50-mile radius, he caught hell for that. Trust me on that. In the back room, uh, conversations on the back phone lines, trust me. That's why he's down the road and out of there. They didn't appreciate that, and that's caused the controversy. Well, why had he gone a step further, again, doing the righteous thing, the correct thing, the thing that should have been done, and said, get our boys and, and men and women, uh, uh, our midshipmen and women, out of there. Get them out of there. In fact, start pulling them off the island ASAP, off Tokyo, off of Japan, because that place is, it, it is totally, it's ruined. It's ruined. We have to assume that, hey, later when we come in with testers and equipment and, and sensors, we'll detect, and if it's radioactive and it's not that bad and the radioactive activity is minimal, hey, you come back into the base, come back to Okinawa, come back to your military base, come back to your port base, whatever you want. But for in the meantime, until we know better, look, I've got plume models from these FOIA documents. Probably never going to get through these screen capture today because I can just sit here and pretty much tell you kind of what's going on, you know. And you can look at these plume models in the FOIA documents. You know Tokyo got hit. Even Gundershill even admits he dug up soil there, sampled it, and over here in the States it would be classified as radioactive waste. It had to be disposed of. 
So Fukushima, even in the documents, they talk about leafy vegetables, milk warnings, and that kind of thing for Tokyo area. So we know they got hit. And, and nevertheless, what happened with our Navy vessels? Well, they were used, I'm told, for going up and down the coast and basically as mobile sensors to pick up radiation, right? It's like mobile guinea pigs riding around on a mobile radiation sensor, right? To me, they're human beings. Get them the hell out of there. We can. What are drones for? What are drones for if you can't fly some? I thought we had a bunch of drones, hundreds of thousands and thousands of hundreds of drones and operators. Israel's got them. We got them. We got them. Israel's got them. Drones, drones, drones. There's probably five drones for every person in this country, if you really think about it. And yet none that can fly over and get reliable pictures, none that can fly over and sense radiation on a constant 24-7 basis, swarms of drones. Isn't that what drones are for? Apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently not. But in these documents, as we'll see, there's some angst over worst case plume model. Why? Worst case model showed you better get all your ships out of there. Japan is screwed with a capital S big time. This ain't no Chernobyl, man. Get out of here. Chernobyl is weak sauce. It's weak. It's weak. It's nothing. It's a light beer. Chernobyl is like the Bud Light of nuclear meltdowns, right? I know. I know what you're saying. It's crazy. It's horrible. A mutated children, a, a 18 mile zone. You can't go in there. Right? Now, I'm telling you, it is the Natural light, the bud light, if you will, of nuclear meltdowns. Fukushima, Guinness Stout. Guinness Stout is what that stuff is. Some kind of heavy lager or something, you know? <laughs> wow, folks. I have to make some jokes about it because in reality, people are going to, a lot of people, a lot of men and women in, in, in the Navy, I suspect, are going to get a serious illness and cancer. As we can well see, they're suing them now. And I got an article up on my screen. I'm not going to read from it at the moment, but. Yeah, they're going to pay a very heavy toll because in an effort to protect this monopoly, right? Because nuclear power, the ultimate monopoly, makes weapons grade, material, tritium and stuff for the weapons, right? You can't recreate it in your own backyard. they got to lock. Meanwhile, they spray the skies with chemicals. Obama wants to talk climate change as inauguration, by the way. Meanwhile, the chemtrail planes are spraying nanoparticulates and a solar panel. What happens when global dimming is like in Florida? I don't know if any of you are from Florida, but they spray every day. Every day for as long as I can remember now. Every day. Every day they're out spraying. I even sent Bill Quinlan at TV20. I used the Appleton chart, the same one the Pentagon the military uses to determine if their aircraft are going to leave a long white streak over the enemy's territory. Why? Because the enemy can shoot you down if he sees that long streak. So the military has to have a means of knowing when a persistent contrail exists or does not exist. Sorry to get distracted, but this is very, very important. I'm sick of being sprayed with that crap. And the children too, right? So I use the Appleton chart. I get the readings from Tampa and from Jacksonville. I'm in between in Gainesville where they fly the balloons up in the air. They get constant altitude readings and barometric readings and pressure readings and humidity readings. I check all that with the Appleton chart. Impossible, impossible for there to be persistent contrails. I get all my information, do a video similar, send it to Bill Quinlan at TV20. In fact, I send them all the information. The first time I sent it to ABC affiliate, by the way. ABC, we know, is called the CIA Network. Since Bill Casey under Ronald Reagan, they literally bought controlling interests and they own ABC News, right? Well, TV20, ABC affiliate, I send Bill Quinlan everything, all my best connections and documents and everything on Kim Jong. We even got declassified military documents to talk about it. I mean, they admit it. They admit it. Anyway, I send it all to him. Not only does he not respond, but I might op go to open my Yahoo email the next day. It's gone. Completely deleted. My account no longer freaking exists. I was like, what? So... I, I was called Central Florida Skywatch, so I opened a new account, North Florida Skywatch. I sent him all the stuff back to him again. You know, I don't know. He sent my wife a thing, not knowing she was, you know, related to me. And he tells her that chemtrails are a myth and has this bizarre, total, uh, you know, debunker-type explanation. When I've used their same Appleton NASA contrail science is what I'm using, Appleton chart, the military uses it. I got a video that shows on Gator Growl, well, this would have been 2012, Gator Growl at University of Florida. They sprayed those kids heavy. Sprayed them heavy today. That's a fact. I proved it. Okay, back to the document. Sorry about that, but that's a tangent that we need to explore, we need to talk about, we need to debate about. Because in America, apparently I don't get a choice whether someone wants to fly over me and spray me like a cockroach. I really don't get a choice in that matter. I don't get a say, well, it's democracy. They say freedom, okay, holders protecting your right to vote. Obama's talking about democracy, swearing up hold the Constitution. But I have no right to no say whether dangerous nanoparticulates, some possibly radioactive, I did test strontium in my rainwater here on the chemtrail test, right? 
you know, they can be sprayed over my head on any given day. I'm expected to continue to pay taxes, keep my head down, keep inhaling this stuff, keep my mouth shut while I know little girls and little boys out in the schoolyards every day. The athletes are sucking it down. You know, much like the athletes in California had to suck down that plume. They sure did, folks. They had to suck it down on the West Coast, man. I mean, think about it. Think about the first month or two. Well, Obama takes off for South America. And, and don't let the online articles fool you. Hopefully some people screen captured that when he went on his South American trip because later they went back in like George Orwell and they wrote back in a bunch of articles that he had that trip planned. That's right. They sure did. But I'm, I, I'm certain myself and a number of people have told me that that trip was unplanned. He just out of the blue said, we're going to South America. Well, about the 19th, we know what's going on in the White House, don't we? We sure do because they were asking for worse case scenario. Worst case scenario. Well, what is that? Think about the MOX fuel. Mix plutonium and uranium in nano form. It's carried aloft. It's tiny little tiny particles when it smolders and burns and radiates and melts down. So based on my discussions this afternoon, this is Marty Virgilio. As I was coming in with the chairman's office and Josh Baskin in particular, Josh has expressed on behalf of the chairman an interest that we engage at high level and I'm thinking that's either the office or the director or DO level at a White House hosted meeting tomorrow at 8.30 to discuss what are or what should be the assumptions that we're using for the calculations on, on consequence, right? And then this is what it's all about, folks, consequence. And I just wanted to. Mike Weber cuts in. Mike Weber says, in terms of the source terms or the Marty Virgilio. Yeah, and we've been working for the last couple of shifts just trying to figure out how to approach this. I think we've on an approach now where we're giving sort of a realistic worst case given the situation in spent fuel two, spent fuel pools three and four, and then the bounding worst case, which would include reactors if things go wrong. Okay, so again, you see there's multiple, you know, they're looking for a realistic, a lot of time they use, we're looking for more realistic, more realistic, more realistic, right? That's like the president asking, bring me the budget and make it work, and you bring it to me and say, nah, I need to be a little more realistic. They ain't going to believe that. Make it more realistic. That's what I get out of it anyway. Could be wrong, but you kind of get a feel when you read these documents, and wow. It's like I say, it is the world's largest cover-up and conspiracy. 9-11 pales, pales in comparison. Fast and Furious pales. Sandy Hook pales, pales, man. And the documents. <laughs> oh, gosh. Tell you what, man. It's like I think they're all Bigfooters right now, really, because here's the real truth and the proof in the documents, right? Multi-agency, agencies tasked for their safety, I mean, it's incredible. The White House is involved. Now we know the president's plume model. Hillary was over there, got the sit rep map. What's in the sit rep map? All sort of interesting stuff about realities going on on the ground. You put that back with our experts over here, well, you immediately should have had warnings. It just didn't happen. People have died thousands and thousands, unfortunately, and it's not two buildings collapsing in this monumental visual spectacle, right? Y'all bless all the people that died in that, and I don't mean any uh, negative thing about them. I'm just saying we spent a lot of time in this country uh, and energy on things that nothing's going to come about. These documents are incredibly damning. Well, you've, I've already read the ones about the Anks, and they're not going to run the worst case. You might have to move Navy ships. I can't get much more hardcore than that. It's men and women, human beings. If you don't like people in the military, so what? They might not be have a very high opinion of you. I don't know, but everyone's a human being, and no one, no one, no one that I can think of, not even my enemies do I wish cancer on, period, end of story. I really don't. I wish them all to be arrested in mass arrest on an unprecedented scale and locked up into a rehab facility, a real rehab facility, not prison, which is an animal factory. That's what I wish upon them, not cancer, though. No one deserves cancer. I'm telling you what, there's this huge effort to to distance and, and draw these two factions apart, the civilians and the military and law enforcement. That I'm not going to let it happen. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's plenty of good people in there. I don't care. This. There's plenty of corrupt judges. Oh, my gosh, I know they all got their Monsanto's portfolio. I know all about that. I know how it works. But on a lower level and even people on a mid-level are probably questioning things right now to a high, high degree when you look at this country. Well, unless you're an intellectually inferior and you can't figure it out. Right, But if you have any kind of brains upstairs, you at least know something's wrong. You kind of know you're under attack, even though you don't really know who it is. You don't know who to counterattack, right? Well, that's what I, this is all about. That's what I've been doing is the plume gate. Who, who have I found the enemy is right now so far, metaphorically speaking? You know, the nuclear industry, global, you know, not just here. I mean, wow, the INPO, International 
uh, nuclear operators, that organization. That's what they are. They're all around the world, hundreds of them, hundreds of them. Mark ones, they sold them, sent them around the world, and when they figured out, hey, there's a lot of stuff that don't work, there's even comes down to one valve. If this one valve don't work, woo, you know, what could happen? Well, think about it. It's like selling a crappy car. They didn't want to do recalls. How do you recall a nuclear power plant? You don't. How do you make changes? Well, it's super expensive, takes a long time, and a lot of manpower. Is it guaranteed to work? No, they can't even fix the crack down in Crystal River. It's not really a crack, though, folks. <laughs> I have to laugh. It is to laugh because I'm told, very reliable source, you know, a crack sounds like a hairline crack, you know, maybe the size of a pen or something like that or a, a writing ink pen or something, but not something you can stick your arm through, right? So I'm told that's a giant. And they don't want to tell you these things. There's real serious problems that can't be repaired. It's not a good investment. It's really not. I'd invest in, in solar if they would release the technology, stop suppressing patents, and quit spraying the sky with nanoparticulates. I'm back to Obama with his little inauguration thing about he's going to tackle climate change. Well, you know what? Stop the planes and start the rains. Okay, that's a little saying I've been saying for know, about a year now. i got a video on YouTube where I go off on that. Stop the planes, start the rains. You know, in 1970, they knew that if you sprayed nanoparticulates, it would cause the greenhouse effect and trap the heat in. If you go back to books around the 70s and read consistently, that's what they say, absolutely across the board consistently. Now they tell you otherwise, but now I tell you the, the conspiracy, the infiltration is much stronger and much more robust and much more organized, and, they, and the technology is greatly advanced, and they're in a much more of a threat, and they have much more greater control. So don't doubt that it's real. It's very real. Who's behind it all right now? And I'm finding a lot of trails lead back to nuclear power. You don't like chemtrails? Well, you don't like nuclear power. Okay, and was my understanding, they, the uranium tailings, a lot of that leftover crap is what they can ship off and sp they can dis depo dispose of it pro properly and pay for it, or they can just fly over your head and spray it. Think about it. What does it cost to get a plane aloft and spray your crap out rather than take it down and, and dump it? This may be exactly what's going on. It serves a number of purposes. I've been over this and... Don't want to get too distracted on on why they would intentionally warm the planet. And gosh, there's so many reasons to do it. But most people don't think like they do. They really don't. You don't have a criminal mind, and it's not you know of your nature to think that way, right? Well, I kind of grew up as a, a troubled youth and and got on the wrong path. I know exactly how they think because you you rationalize and you you know you villainize, and and at some point you have no respect for anybody. Maybe not even yourself anymore. So. You, if you'll hurt yourself, then you'll certainly hurt other people, and that's what, that's kind of the mentality that I see out there. A lot of them are trying to protect their jobs. They have a nice, uh, lucrative jobs that pay uh, a fair uh, salary, and they don't want to lose that. And they have to come to terms with the fact that nuclear power, again, what's the problem in America? People don't want to come to terms with it, and it's not being put in their face thanks to a lot of YouTube channels, the big ones that I expect to help that aren't just standing by and won't do anything. Thousands of subscribers. All you got to do is hit the freaking remix button, but they won't. I mean, at what point do I have to look at some of these big YouTube channels, independent channels, and say, hey, there's been an infiltration of YouTube, right? Now I got to start naming names just like Operation Mockingbird style alternative media infiltration. That's what's going on. You know, some of them are offering to help. Most of them, the bigger ones, they don't. They will not touch it. They will not. They'll touch anything that you can't prove, though. I've noticed that. Okay, let's have a look at the next screen capture. There's some redaction there going on. A lot of plenty of redaction. Okay, so in the last one we, we finished up, they're talking about spent fuel, uh, fuel pool three and four, and uh, uh, doing some scenarios for the White House. And speaking here is Marty Virgilio after some redaction. And Don read me the long list of people that are going to be there. Right now we're lined up to send a technical expert, but the chairman's office is asking if we can. Plus, you know, the technical experts, plus a senior level management to go nose to nose with a, a, a Aoki, Aoki on a position that we believe is the right position in initial conditions and assumptions for the analysis. Let me let John give you just a little bit more what we're doing on the approach. John, hi, Charlie, Mike, Charlie Miller, good evening. Marty Virgilio, we've been in this ongoing back and forth where we've had, dare I say, criticism. I'm trying to be nice, some real angst, apparently by folks about what went into the source term, why we made that assumption, and while we have tried to patiently explain it back and forth, there seems to be at least still some mixing of what we did as a realistic worst case, which has some of reactor two, 
all of spent fuel four and half of spent fuel three in order to try and do our protective action. That was the base for the press release that went out on Wednesday. And then what our answer was, redaction, 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 which was we named the melt core, that's a melting core, melt core setup, which included contributions from reactors one, two, three, and all four of the spent fuel pools. Now, every shift that I am coming here, I keep thinking I'm going to be told that NARIC will have run the melt core worst case model for the transatlantic calculation to see what the deposition might be in the United States. And every time I come in here, they're asking us questions, and they haven't run it yet. Jim Weber, G. Marty Virgilio. While we ha again, now, Narek, I need to back up, and I have my um, definitions page open, which on Uncovering Plumegate, I have a, a file there, a post called Acronyms and Definitions Pertaining to Plumegate. Okay, it's not that hard to figure out what's going on. It just takes a little bit, and now you have a, a guide for some of the acronyms and definitions, and I'm updating it and... Uh, trying to get it in order. But what I want to mention here is when we talk about NARIC, he says, uh, Marty Virgilio says, now every shift that I'm coming here, I keep thinking I'm going to be told that NARAC, N-A-R-A-C, will have run the melt core worst case model. NARAC is the, does plume modeling, right? And they do it under the Department of Energy. And this is, I've gathered from the documents and I made notes, they do plume modeling under DOE. So it's a subset a, a subgroup underneath and probably at the um, under the authority of the Department of Energy. So I just want to be clear. Marty Virgilio, while we have been in the TA bridge until a little while ago, my folks back in the protective measures team have been engaged in yet another conversation, and I don't know where it actually stands at this moment. But the call that the meeting tomorrow is to talk about Redaction, 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 big block of redaction. DOD wants to know where to move their ships. EPA and others want to know what to expect on the West Coast. HHS wants to know what kind of levels in order to make recommendations on whether or not they should actually recommend potassium iodide at some point, and it goes sort of on and on. Redaction, redaction, redaction. I would hope that a success would be that in the end, there is a inaudible agreement high enough that my folks wouldn't continue to bang their heads against the telephone back and forth with folks at our level about what assumptions are, and they would actually do some calculations for us. That's the model of success was exactly what was communicated to me by Josh from the chairman. Again, they refer to Chairman Jacksco, who, you know, he, he initiated the 50-mile protective zone um, and also, you know, he did some good things. He did try to do some things, as you can see here, this the chairman is saying, here's how you guys need to communicate. He's already saying that, and they're, they're having a, a difficult time. They all want to be in alignment, number one. They're ha they want to agree on assumptions or source terms to make sure, and they want it to be a reasonable worst-case model, right? And it, to some extent, you can see that NRC may be trying to say, look, it, it's this is this and this and this and this. It's worse than that. This is what it needs to be. And they're like, they don't want that. They don't like that. And they're dragging their feet doing the NARAC run, and they're dragging their feet, you know, so it's clear that it's some element to NRC is trying a little bit, right? So I shouldn't be too harsh on everyone and, and, and need to make that clear. Jaxco could have done worse, really. I mean, it may not be saying, you know, too much in the long run considering the situation, but just to be clear, some people did try to do a little bit. And it's very difficult when everyone you're coming up against in the system is pitted against you because that's just not going to fly. At the top of the high level at the White House, it wasn't going to fly. It's not going to fly. And that's why you hear the address in the Rose Garden from Obama that says nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about, he says. Now, I should probably quickly just back up because this is some pretty heavy stuff right here. You need to understand what's going on in the situation. That It seems to me like any time they give them a worst-case scenario and they try to pass up the line or, or get NARAC to run something on it, they shoot it back and say they don't agree with those assumptions. It's not that bad. It can't be that bad. Again, this is. does this happen in other industry? Does solar power? No, nah, I don't think so. Coal and, and, and petrochemical? Maybe when there's a BP oil a pl underwater plume and when there's a Chevron Valdez spill and that kind of thing. Yeah, but some industry, you don't you don't see this in the solar industry. You really don't. Now, why did Solyndra fail? Hey, that's easy. I, I would have looked at Bob and I, you know, when I heard they're going to do Solyndra and he's going to spend $500 million on it, 
I was like, it's a wonder, you know, it's amazing I keep calm. I have to do music. I record music and go in here and forget the world, like Boston says. I forget the day when I do music. Because otherwise, I'm thinking about Obama giving Solyndra $500 million. Do you know how many hungry homeless people I could have fed with that? Gosh, oh, wow. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. Now, why did Slender fail? They knew it was going to fail. In fact, I bet if you look at the stock ticket records, someone can actually put a uh, put call on it. I believe that's what it's, or call, one of the two, to say, hey, it's, it's going to go out of business. It's going to fail. I'm betting it's going to fail. And they knew it was going to fail because they're suppressing and restricting solar technology and solar patents. I've read this uh, particular clip out of David Wilcox's book from the Federation or Union of Scientists that put together a study on suppressed technology and suppressed patents here in the United States of America. And that's why it failed. That should make you sick to your stomach that that many millions of dollars was thrown down the toilet, down the drain, zip, gone, somebody got it, somebody got the money, yes, I don't deny that, but probably someone who's already super fabulously wealthy rich, at least compared to a guy living out of his car right now. Okay, that's all I'm saying on that. And as President of the United States, Patrick Penny would have done different. I would have said, no, you don't spend 500 you know, million on cylinder, not unless you're going to release some patents and let them have an 80% efficient solar panel, solar cell. If you do that, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's not a good business investment. Of course, I'm keenly aware of the fact how this monopoly works. So they don't want to do a worst case run. Why? Because two reasons. One, I suspect it was worst case. And two, you know, it would have shown for sure, you can't release that to the press, you can't release it to the public, it would have shown beyond a doubt we were going to get hit and hit hard. And we did plutonium levels up, everything. That's our screen captures from Alexander Higgins' blog that show all that radnet monitors rigged, the whole deal, the whole deal. A giant conspiracy and cover-up. Again, maybe I've been clear on this to some people. Everything else pales in comparison. If you have a conspiracy, be it Sandy Hook or um, what else, 9-11 or any of them, any of them that has a higher fatality count, that has more agencies involved, Right? And has more proof and evidence, specifically in the form of the Freedom of Information documents, right, pertaining to Fukushima, all available to the public on the NRC uh, webpage. Also, you can go in through the Uncovering Plume Gate, and I have the um, directory to, to get you around quick, right? So it's a huge, 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 huge. So every day when I look down my scroll on YouTube, I see Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook. Yeah, it's big and it's important. Got to cover it. Need to cover Sandy Hook. But I say, why are all these same people digging in to Plume Gate? Just one screen capture of one page on the ones on the Anks and the Navy ships and they don't want to run the worst case because you might have to tell the Navy to move their ships. That's a whole article. That's a whole blockbuster article. I'm going to write, I'm writing it up. I'm going to start today. I've already figured this out. I've got to write an article about this. Hey, it might even play into the people that are suing the, uh, well, I suppose they're suing TEPCO, right, in Japan. But later on, maybe they realize our own side, boys on our own side and girls on our own side, didn't do the right thing. You, they didn't take their lumps. A fair analogy is what happened to Fukushima. Let's pretend a guy has a piece of property and he burns trash. You bring him your trash, he throws on his fire, he burns. Okay, this is just a, a hypothetical analogy here. And so that's his job. He makes his living burning trash on his property. Well, one day, there's some high winds that blow up, you know, quite unexpected, and his fire hops over the fence and starts burning out in the field and through the woods. Okay, the guy's in a panic, all right, because he makes his living from burning trash. He doesn't want anyone to think he, he can't handle it, right? He doesn't want anyone to think that burning trash is that dangerous. Okay, but it's burning straight towards the house where people live. What does the guy do? Does he go run to the house and knock on the door and say, you got to get out, we got to spray water, we got to do whatever, get done? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Because he knows that would alert the people that he's a damn fool burning trash and his trash fire catches and goes over the fence. And maybe it's not as safe as they'd like to think. So he, I can't tell. Well, it burns the house down. You know, some of them die, all of them die, plenty of them die. Then what happens? He goes into cover-up mode to try and hide the fact that it was his fire and it was all his doing and what have you. And that's a that's fair analogy that I can come up with so far, right? You just got to man up to the plate. Say, yeah, it was me. It was our fire. It's not working. We got to save lives. They, didn't even, they don't even care about the their people in the military. It's true. It's absolutely true. They really are cannon fodder. They're expendable assets, like Arnold Schwarzenegger says in the movie Predator. We're assets, Dylan, expendable assets, right? That's what Arnold says. They, he knows. He knows they're expendable assets. We'll just use them to tool up and down the coast and detect for radiation, right? That, to me, is pretty sick. That's a whole article. Then no one's jumping on that? Well, I find that. I find it decidedly 
convenient for these YouTube sites not to just hit the remix button. They know who they are, and they're going to get called out soon. There's a list being compiled even as we speak. Other people are working on it. It's a big thing. People recognize there's a heavy infiltration on all fronts, mass, alternative, independent, YouTube, uh, even under the WordPress blogs. Vimeo, all of them. They all. It's our taxes paying for it. I'm convinced. I'm convinced of it. Well, it's no different than Operation uh, Hoodwink from the 50s and 60s. I got a lecture on that. If you want to go to HP WordPress blog and find out all about it, you can't make it up. You really can't. Okay, DoD wants to know where to move their ships. It's right here. It says it on this one right here. I give a link to this document. You screen capture it up because they can go in and take this stuff back out. Um, he that giveth can also taketh away, right? And that's what they, they do. They'll go on their computer and take it too. So all of us researchers back it up on a regular constant save early, save often, remove your portable hard drive and stash it away. And if they want to come get my hard drive, they, well, they can maybe pry it out of my cold dead hands, I suppose, because I'm not giving it up. You know, I'm not a anti-federalist, okay? I'm not a truther. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know what I am? I am a man, a patriot that uncovers government crimes and government corruption. Now, if the fact that vocabulary and lingo and jargon that I use happens to fall on an FBI or a West Point Academy list that, that brands me an anti-federalist, you, that's your problem, you're labeling and stuff. Do I need to play my song again? My song's about love, friendship, unity, peace, peace within, peace without. Friendship, love, unity, that kind of stuff. Because I'm sick of hearing about everything else. I'm sick of it. I really am. We're not getting anywhere. You know, I have to use those certain words to describe government corruption and crime. Crimes that really, you know, Plume Gate, i got to be honest with you, it's a crime against all humanity. It really is. It, it makes Nazi Germany. I'm like, yeah, that's freaking nothing, man. Because, you know, this, Nazi Germany was crushed and went away, right? Supposedly, Operation Paperclip notwithstanding, but... By and large, that war movement was crushed. What we see now is no move to stop nuclear industry. Even though I can read you right here, DOD wants to know where to move their ships. Well, maybe White House and the high-level Pentagon don't want to freak people out. Because if you got to evacuate all your troops, had you done the right thing, all the world would have known immediately, holy crap, Ola, this is the big one. And like I say, 2 AF, two years after Fukushima, life before and life after, it was the big one. Read the documents. You'll know that spent fuel pool four was dry for days and days and days. They can spray cannons on it. It may help a little bit, but, you know, in all honesty, it melts through the concrete, down through the torus, down through the ground. China syndrome. What are they doing? I don't know because I think they're, it's a hoax. And, and any pictures we get to see, hey, I don't know where they come from. I don't know who's taking them. I can, they can tell me they're offloading fuel from Unit 4, but are they? Or did it all melt down through, which the documents seem to indicate that? And had it melted through, would they be honest with us? No, we know TEPCO's liars. We know multiple agencies here and involved are lying and concealing and covering up the severity and nature of the plume and the fallout and everything. So no, we know we can't trust them. Nothing that comes out of the mouth of Satan is, is, a, is truth. All right? It's all falsehood at this point. It's all the devil working his magic where he smiles and he tells you he loves you. Meanwhile, he won't get rid of this very, you know what nuclear power is? I figured it out. It's great. You know why they sold all these plants around the world? Because a nation that's like maybe may later become your enemy, you have them build nuclear power plants. So you know why? Psh, go figure it out. Go figure it out and look at Fukushima. Any nation that pisses this country off is a, a total, I feel sorry for them. I really do. And at some point, they're going to turn. It's going to be guys like me and everybody else who are going to get, you know, harassed at the very least, at the very least. Or our time is up, you know, one of the two. Whatever that means, I'm not sure, because how can you arrest me if I haven't committed a crime? All I do is expose government corruption, and, 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 and I'm an investigative reporter. That's all there is to it. You know, and I'm one who's more into what I can prove in documents. Why did I touch upon Sandy Hook hoax and then explain the pot? You know, at one point I said, hey, I'm almost convinced this is a hoax. And I came back out and said, look, it has to be a certain number of possibilities. I don't even know anymore. I really don't even know. But what I do know in the documents, well, look, I can read to you this. Quote, DOD, Department of Defense, wants to know where to move their ships. Their concern in DOD is anyway, at some level, People do care. I've been clear on this. But at higher levels, eh, I don't know, mass arrests on an unprecedented scale. 
I can be very adamant about that. I mean, until I see that, I know things ain't going to change because there is a secret government, right? There's a secret uh, conspiracy going on. Uh, JFK is, elaborates on it and expounds upon it. I don't take my word for it. I can play that clip. I've played it awful enough times already. People ought to be familiar that 20, 30, 40 years ago, people knew about this conspiracy and were quite concerned about it. Okay, it goes on to say, in order to make recommendations, DOD wants to know to move, if they need to move ships. EPA want to know what to expect on the West Coast. HHS wants to know what kind of levels in order to make recommendations on whether or not they should actually recommend potassium iodide at some point. And it goes sort of on and on, heavy redaction, heavy redaction. I would hope that a success would be that in the end, there is a inaudible agreement high enough that my folks wouldn't continue to bang their heads against the telephone back and forth with folks at our level about what assumptions are. Here's the guy, I wanted to bring this back up. This gentleman, Marty Virgilio, for lack of a better word, again, he's very much participating in the cover-up from what I've seen. He has parents also that work at some capacity in our, in our CR on the uh, protective measures team. And he's getting calls back and forth, and he's probably privy to a lot of more real-time, real sensitive information. And so here, clearly, you can see there's different levels of information floating around. Depending on where you are, depends on what you get to know, what level you're at. A lower person that's a noob that just came in, a newbie that doesn't know much. Some of these guys have made, early on, you can see they made mistakes when they we didn't realize they were being recorded, and people had to remind you, hey, we're all being recorded, man. Be careful what you say. Not those direct exact words, but pretty much that, you know, that's the gist of it. And if you read through, it's very clear, and that's, that's a conclusion everyone will come to. Now, a team of 50,000 lawyers, given sufficient time, may come to something else, just like the Constitution. If you put enough lawyers on it, yeah, there's no, you can interpret it any way you want, right? Okay, I move on to the next one. I tried to box some of this stuff in what was important. Mike Weber, so he knows about that request, Charlie Miller, right. Now, but as I remember, he was he was waffling on what they wanted him to do there. Waffling is not the right word. He seemed to have angst about doing that. So maybe that's what's holding this up. I don't know. Mike Weber, yeah, yeah. Can we just get one worst case and put it on the shelf? See, the, the, you know, you would think that within, I don't know, 48 hours, this is how it should work. Because as dangerous as nuclear power is, are you telling me? And my expected to believe we don't have a system in place, the technology, the manpower, the resources, the know-how, to within 48 hours, maybe 24 if you ask me, within 48 hours produce some kind of model from a worst-case scenario out of this facility in Japan and say, hey, it could, could be this bad. Judging from satellite reconnaissance that we're looking at, and don't tell me we don't have satellites right over Japan, we've got military bases all up in it, all over it, all for, since World War II. They've never gone anywhere, never gone anywhere. So between all that, you can't look in with a satellite and say, holy smokes, look at Unit 3, look at Unit 4, crikey. We better look at some kind of worst case and let's do it fast because we have American citizens here. We give it a 50-mile uh, protective zone, okay, but let's get to work and see what the worst case is. And if it's as bad as we suspect, we have got to get all our ships out of there. we got to get, you look at the wind direction, start sailing them in the other direction for crying out loud, what's, what's wrong with these people? What is really wrong with them that they don't care about a human being's life? And, and it's not just a guy falls over dead all of a sudden. He dies from freaking cancer or something like that. That's horrible. That is horrible. The one serving for you, protecting us for freedom. And, you know, as I mature and I read more and gain more knowledge, I do understand how that works. You do have to have a military to some capacity to some extent. Why? Because other crazy people around the world are trying to take over like Dr. Evil do. The Chinese want to take over the world. The Russians want to take over. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants to it. Okay, the thing is, you just have to defend yourself and not go uh, 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 committing colonialism all around the world and hegemony and encircling everybody with thousands of bases. You know, that's that's got to be frightening for a lot of people, especially when you look at how the U.S. can't even run their own nuclear program. I mean, seriously, seriously, IAEA says it's clean and emission-free. That is insane. They all have radioactive discharges, all nuclear power plants. Now, on the bright side, they're always under a certain level that is safe for you. Always. They, I, I've never heard of one that discharged more than, uh, you know, I don't hear about it, but they all will admit, they will have to admit, that they do have a radioactive discharge, okay? Now, the Tooth Fairy Report says that the teeth of the babies and the kids closer to the nuclear power plant, higher levels of strontium in the teeth. They argue that, the shills and the trolls and the nuclear apologists. By the way, how can a nuclear apologist, can he apologize? How, does he, how is that going to work? 
a nuclear apologist. Is he going to apologize? Can he apologize enough to bring back people that are dead? Do you think Russian apologists are still apologizing over Chernobyl? How long is it going to take him to apologize to bring all the people that's dead back from Fukushima now? Because in the 14 weeks after, a conservative effort was, uh, uh, estimate was 13, under 14,000. That was upgraded to 20, 22,000. That's a 14 weeks afterwards. Wow. Wow. Okay, that we broke 9-11 there, folks, by what, three, four times? Three, four times by the year 2030. Oh, well, a big time broke 9-11 at 1.3 million estimated fatalities from Plume Gate, Fukushima fallout, continued fallout, continued em em emanations. Everyone going about their business over here like there's nothing, that, you know. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Marty Virgilio, right, right. Charlie Miller, right? Marty Virgilio, right. Charlie Miller. And if something's changed and that's not what they want, okay, but we all need to be aligned on what it is we're trying to achieve. I, I highlighted that on my file the alignment thing. What is alignment? We need to be aligned. We need to be aligned. Let, folks, let me just be straight up. It means we got to get our lie straight. And I'm just being honest with you. We've got to get the lie straight. We need to be aligned. If you're not aligned and I'm not aligned, maybe you say uh, uh, three source terms and I say five source terms and somebody looks like a fool. So make sure we are aligned. That is what that means. It's a friendly euphemism, just like an effluent. In a radioactive discharge, it, you know, do you think the NRC wants to say radioactive discharge in every sentence? No, no. They say, so find me a word that means discharge that's really friendly and fluffy and nice. And effluent was the one. That sounds beautiful, doesn't it? It almost sounds like effluent. It sounds like something you want to collect up and take home with you or something, right? Like manna or something. I don't know. An effluent fell from the sky. We scraped it up, took it home. It was like gold or something. I don't know. I'll go to the next frame. Okay, he's talking again, Virgilio, about his folks and the latest in a phone call. He's got a connection. His folks are in the protective measures team. He's got an inside phone call. They tell him what's really going on. But but even still, NRC, in the, if they want to do a worst-case scenario, even as far as they're willing to go, which might, even in my opinion, is not worst case, but it's more than the others, it seems to be stiff resistance and foot dragging when they send it to NARAC or you know, maybe do they get it to the present? Let's read on and find out. Charlie Miller, here's the big one. If you're getting angst about moving naval ships and things like that, the worst case scenario isn't necessarily the one you want to run. Marty Virgilio, right, Charlie. This is what we're all thinking. There's that there's, you know, you run at least two cases, right? That would be one one bad one and one not so bad. Worst case and least worst case, what I keep hearing here. Charlie Miller, yeah. And I box that in because right, it's pretty big time right there when you think about it. He, not, only, not only that Charlie Miller says that, you know, if, you, if it's causing you stress and worrying about maybe having to tell them they better move all their naval ships, you know, just don't run that worst case scenario. Hey, that's how we solve it. Er, doesn't mean it's not worst case scenario. We, we just ain't going to run a, pl a blue model that way, right? Who cares about the sailors? Who cares about the USS Reagan? Who cares? we got to protect this industry. Hey, my paycheck, my big fat paycheck, right? Marty Virgilio. Okay, it's not bad enough Charlie Miller says that. Here's what Marty Virgilio says. Right, Charlie, this is what we're all thinking. We're all thinking. It's not just him. Who's we all? We're all NRC, players amongst the NRC, right? Should be getting the drift here. Again, I told people, and I've been very clear and adamant about this, this is the world's largest cover-up. In my lifetime, I doubt another one's going to come on. We can prove. I mean, it proves what JFK talked about, Hoover talked about. You know, everyone says, there can be a conspiracy that big, it's impossible. Wrong, it's right here in the Plume Gate documents. All of them, DHS, FEMA, you said, White House, CDC, NRC, DOE, Bechtel, GE, boom, you know. Gosh, I could probably, it's lyrics to a song right there, right? I already have one called Perverts in the Pentagon, but I never finished the song because I, you know, I just kind of figured that's pushing a button a little too hard, but it was in relation to the 5,200 defense contractors and Pentagon and DOD employees that have been busted watching child porn and downloading child porn. Right? Someone's got to say something about it. I really don't give a shit anymore. If they won't do whatever to me, I'm, I'm here waiting on them 24-7. I made my peace with the Almighty big time, a long time ago, a long time ago. So whatever they got to do, let's dance. All right, also to talk about the Units 3 and 4, again, clearly they are worried in a big way about Units 3 and 4. Unit 3 mocks fuel. Unit 4 had a full 
offload and they had uh, rods that had yet to even be used, fresh rods in there as well. So as we see in the documents, when when Unit 4 uh, sprung a leak, let's say, and lost all its water, okay, clearly it lost its water, not just for a day, not for a couple of days, days is plural, it's the 19th here, and still no water in it. You can spray it with a cannon, you can hit it with a jet, you can helicopter over some water, but clearly in these documents, they know it's, that's ineffective, largely ineffective. Maybe some, you know, like I was being told today, maybe to some extent the water cannons wash down some of the fallout and it went, goes into the ocean instead of floating around in the hemisphere. You know, you're trading, a, you know, a, a, the lesser of two evils there, I suppose. Either way, it's damned serious. And look at the amount going into the ocean. It's over for the Pacific Ocean. It really is. Again, they don't, they don't want to discuss this. You want the Atlantic Ocean to get ruined? Just let Oyster Creek or one of these ones on the East Coast let it go up. Not when, but not if, but when. It's a matter of time. It's all like a ticking time bomb. Now let's just renew it for another 40 years. The hell with the fact that the boric acid eats away at the bolts and you got to constantly go in there and check the freaking size of the bolts because they rust out and they eat it. They get eaten away. It's cr you know, I started reading the stuff, what it takes to maintain nuclear power. we got to get them shut down. Systematically, methodically, we'll create jobs. We'll release, suppress alternative technology, solar technology. We'll land all the chemtrail planes and say, look, we know you want to melt the polar ice, and you got all your little schemes and plans, but you're going to put that out aside for now. We're going to land the chemtrail planes, release this technology. You know, solar power, I'm telling you right now. We've got a huge, giant ball of a sun, and we're using everything but solar power to its full capacity. Right? I'm telling you, thousands of patents suppressed. Thousands. That's just the ones they had to suppress. Others, like my dad, is just, if you don't fund his proposal, he just goes away, and he's sitting on top of his solar uh, super battery. You know? <laughs> Hey, if you guys want to keep paying you know, five hundred dollars a week for electricity, however much it is, I know in Gainesville some bills run from three, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks a week here from GRU, Gainesville Regional Utilities. So hey, if that's fine for you guys, don't get busy, don't get involved. Marty Virgilio, and what if that goes bad? He's referring to units three and four. What if that goes bad? And then the other worst case. Then what would wrap in the reactors as well, notwithstanding the fact that those reactors appear stable at this point in time? Again, he's mentioning worst case again. Plenty in this document mention a worst case. So they discussed it. They talked about it. They foot drug on it. But early on, they already had run some worst case models, as we'll see, days before it had already been done. It had already been done. They already knew what the worst case was days prior to this, maybe even before that. But the evidence as far back as I can find. Okay. Again, this is the DOD ships, no worst case, says Charlie Miller, right. So I guess the question is what, you know, what is it that they want run? I mean, do they still want this worst, worst case? If they want to scrap that, that's fine. You know, we just need to know where we're headed because it doesn't seem like we can ever get this worst case run. John, yeah, it's not only what is it they want, but it's almost as if we want to influence what it is they want. Charlie Miller, yeah, kind of interesting there. It's almost as if we want to influence what it is they want. And that's kind of what's going on here. Like I say, if you went in and said, look, we're, don't we want to do four source, four source terms and add this in there, and then they would come back and say, um, yeah, that's not as realistic as what it should be. Can you come back Come back with one? Come back at me, they would say. And then you, and you'd say, oh, well, man, I can't go more than that because if that wasn't realistic, i got to go less. You bet, well, that's not, can you give me one that's like a more, a, the least uh, worst case, they'll say. Oh, 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 is that what you want? Oh, right, 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 mate. Right, now I understand, mate. You want the least worst case, mate. Make it one source term then, right? I mean, seriously. <laughs> uh, you know, as long as we're all going to get radiated and die of cancer, I figure I'm going to expose these bastards for this as best I can. Right. My dad was in a nuclear he taught for many years at the University of Florida, sent kids out there with knowledge, but who were these kids, right? Who, who were to say they were going to be good people and do good deeds and recognize when harm and when evil was being done and when unrighteous works were being done? No, no, they give them a lot of power, exit the university, out into the real world to do what? To do what? Look around you. These universities, you know what they are? Military testing facilities. they got a nano thing here, nano department. Nuclear reactor here. I think it's shut down now, but yeah, they do all sort of yeah, stuff, drones and stuff here, all that. It's all for military by and large. Plus, they they leave their indoctrinated in a special way. Lots of knowledge, but they didn't really teach them to be good people. Some of them, I mean, not all of them, but 
by and large, look at what are they into? Wow, man, stuff that's not important to me at all, at all. Not anymore, anyway. And I won't deny I was brainwashed, too, but hopefully they find some way to get out of it at some point. Because I don't care about football anymore. I do not give a flying freak about any football game. I really don't. Uh, getting high, getting drunk, I really don't care. you got to come down anyway. What's the freaking point? What's the point? You know? And once you find some kind of a religion, and I have my own version that works for me, uh, things things are a lot better now for me. Oh, much better. Much better. I'm high enough off of that the way I figured it out. The universe is old. So old, well, I'm only 44 years old. In my lifetime, I don't get to know much anything. So who am I to just assume it's not, you know, what it looks like here is a material world and and that's it. We just die and disappear. I think I've been around a lot longer than that. I might have already gone through this lifetime several times for all I know. Right? Anyway, you got to think about that stuff because we're all getting radiated. Right? It's still flowing down on everybody. It's in the water. Alaska got dosed. I got a screen capture from Shazam about how many um, rims per year a child is going to get in Alaska. 35 rims per year or something? It's, wow. Wow. That's because the max is five rims to a nuclear worker who's pregnant got to go home. That's minor, or maybe it's less than that. But I think five rims is the the per year allotment is what your maximum. Or they send you home is from a nuclear facility, is my understanding. All right. So do you want to scrap that particular uh, plume model run if it's too severe and they don't like it? We'll come back with something less severe. That that's probably in a nutshell what all these these ditra runs in this section are summed up. Male participant. We have Bruce Watson scheduled to go down tomorrow morning as a technical expert. He's been here during the day with a bunch of us when much of this was developed going back four to three or four days ago when we did the worst case scenario. I'll stop right there, go to the next screen capture. Just want to show you that this is the 19th and three or four days ago they did a worst case scenario, right? So three or four days ago in, in all righteousness they should have told all the Navy vessels take a course, plot a course into the wind and get out, get out. But you know what? If they did that, folks, guess what the rest of the world would have said? Guess what Americans would have said? You couldn't have denied that we made all the ships sail as far and as fast away as possible. And all right, picking up guys on the ground and say, grab the boys in Okinawa and all the other bases, load them up and get out. That is in, in all reality and all fairness, man. I tell you, I promise you, that's what should have happened. That, that's what should have happened. And it, it didn't happen. They they knew how bad it was, and they just kept their mouth shut. It was a giant cover-up, a giant, and not just for the Navy ships. I mean, we got blasted over here, and did FEMA do anything? Did DHS do anything? And so, again, I ask my fellow Americans, why do we have these, you know, this giant federal machine if, by and large, it's not, it doesn't serve us? It does not, but it does serve the super wealthy, the captains of industry. Sure does. Okay, let me try to fast forward here. There's some discussion about sending the guy to the White House and how they're going to get him in there and bringing a worst case. Marty Virgilio, yes, that's quite correct. We can we can set up we can set up a set of things that you can describe to them. None of that will be new in terms of the two sets of cases that we have provided to NARAC. We're also meeting tonight with the RST, that's Reactor Safety Team, trying to look at whether there's a slightly more realistic where we back out the reactor, whether we would make any modifications to our assumptions on spent fuel three and four. Okay, it looks like looking for any excuse to change the worst case scenario. And again, I say if you look at visibly at the damage and what the satellite reconnaissance certainly would have given our, our military and intelligence agencies, at that point, just looking at Unit 3, on the 14th, okay, when Unit 3 exploded and they talk about the event on the 14th, well, folks, at that point, you don't need no more warning from me. That was the mox fuel. Get them out. Get them out. Did they do that? No, certainly not. Now we have a Navy people suing TEPCO in Japan. And I tell you now, if they had access to these documents, specifically the one I'm looking at now and the one following this document, I'm told, uh, this could be... Um, a, a boon to their case, and they might want to reconsider who it is they're actually suing. Again, that might be the beginning of the plume gate breaking over here. If these people in the Navy who have been raided and are suffering from sickness as a result thereof would just have their attorneys look through this document, the one following it, the next one I'm going to go into right after this one kind of follows up from where this one left off, and we clearly see they, they know how bad it is, uh, what is being questioned, uh, moving Navy ships, 
Why aren't we going to do it? Cause too much angst, folks. And that, that's just the upshot of it all. It, I know it sucks. I know it's horrible. But, I mean, gosh, man, we just got to come to terms with it. It really happened. They really did cover it up. There really is a huge conspiracy. There's a monster infiltration. It's a conspiracy. It, it's, oh, man. It's incredible. It's incredible. Quickly, again, if you... If you're doubting to any degree, could they pull off a cover-up like this? Could they have done it before? Could they pull off a hoax like Sandy Hooks? Not to you know, spend too much time on that. Is it possible? And the further away you get with these things, yes. In Japan, yes. Osama bin Laden, yes. Helicopter crash, Jimmy Carter rescue, Iran hostages, yes. The further away you go, what do they have at their disposal? How can they do it? How can they cover all this? Do you doubt all these agencies could work together? Do you doubt they could be all connected like the tentacles of an octopus? Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. Not praise. See, JFK was, <laughs> wow, he's just the man. He was the master. He knew it all. He was like Yoda back then, right? They had to whack it. They had to. He already... He was elaborating on a conspiracy, and he was saying there's a plot to enslave all these people around the world. That's what he said. I'm paraphrasing, but there's a quote of JFK's where a lot of you are familiar with this. He, he says there's this huge conspiracy and a plot to enslave everyone. I'm not going to allow it to the best of my ability. He says, well, you can't really do much about it when you're dead. Okay, so, so if you're doubting the ability for there to be a conspiracy, for the ability for there to be a hoax or for them to pull one over on us or pull the wool over us, don't doubt it. Do not doubt it. That is their specialty, social programming, the illusion. Okay. White House meet, melt on the floor, Unit 4, Marty Virgilio. But that's pulling on the piece of what was part of it. It's not, it's not a substantial drawback of the case because, quite frankly, we still think 4 is a melt on the floor in there. Charlie Miller, right. Mike Weber. And, Charlie, did you see the point paper that I think Kathy Gibson worked on overnight? Charlie Miller, no, I haven't seen any of that. Mike Weber, yeah, that, as I recall, reading it on my BlackBerry was a whole series of different scenarios and it. Some of the, the transcription is kind of rough in, in here. Any of these sentences that kind of make 90% sense but a word is out of place, that's just in the transcribing, poor transcribing job. Maybe the tapes are difficult to hear. I don't know why. Again, early broadcast, I said, if I have a Rhodes NT1 mic for my home studio for cheap, and they can't get good recorders in here that we can hear the quality sound, especially when it's like a, you know, just a meeting in a room or something. It should be crystal clear quality, and we should know everybody that's in that room, right? Don Cool. Yeah, let me let me explain that quickly. That got started when we said if they if NARAC runs the melt core worst case, can you get big numbers on the West Coast? And what might be a more realistic way to model what might happen? And Kathy Gibson put together three different possible options for how you would do that. There's a one pager on that we on that we have here, Charlie, and you could very quickly be able to go through. Kathy Gibson will be on duty from eleven to seven, so you would be able to interface with her and so on and so forth. You can see again clearly multiple different worst case scenarios, and there really should only be one. That's kind of my point to some of these. Let me skip through that one's about a recorded line. They talk about call me on a non recorded line doesn't necessarily mean they're up to anything. They, that situation, the guy's name and address and identification and what have you, he didn't want announced over the thing. But it d does go to show there is there are other lines of communication other than the ones they're being recorded on they could communicate on if they need to. Okay, let me try to... F okay, here we go. Page 167. If we decide that more realistic is to factor a reactor out of this and we need half of three and all of four, so be it. And I said, the thing now, looking at the correlation of wind and time and contamination on the ground, is when they run the system, should we tell them to go ahead and run it for an event which originally happened on male participant on March 14, male participant on March 14. And so what would happen next as a bunch of volatiles is no longer present, either because they have decayed and it's been a week or because they're laying on the ground northwest of the site? Male participant, right. Male participant, in terms of what might now eventually come, should that melt core get into the concrete and do something else? Male participant. This is another male participant. Yeah. <clears throat> Original male participant. And I'm beyond my level of knowledge as the radiation biologist. Male participant. Yeah, I read that with the radiation chemistry there or something. Brian McDermott. 
Hey, John, this is Brian. The, if you guys could find out, you know, maybe from TEPCO or whatever, NISA, what's the status? What is their best estimate of the status of the spent fuel pool in Unit 4? We talked about this earlier today. I think it's causing some angst around here because, you know, there's no steam that's been seen coming out of there. And, you know, people are worrying that the stuff has maybe melted through that concrete floor. John Moniger, right? Brian McDermott. And the next stop is the top of the Taurus. John Moniger, right? Brian McDermott. I'm sorry. John Moniger. And it's going to bust through that Taurus. Brian McDermott, right. And then you've got potential steam explosions with this melting into the water in the Taurus. So there's water in the Taurus. And then after that, who knows where it goes? John Moniger, right. There was a news release on NTK, NKP this morning that they just started or initiated cooling down Unit 4 spent fuel pool, but some type of spray. We assume it's the fire trucks, etc. But, you know, those things, that limited success. They will come back, and I'll tell you, parentheses, audio interference. They'll come back and they'll say the infrared detectors that they have show that the temperature for all four spent fuel pools are at or less than 100 degrees Celsius. I mean, they're relying on that, which think they can't. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of it, debris, steel, concrete superstructure on top of the spent fuel pool, and whatever is on the pool is significantly different from units one, two, three, and four. So, and then they say, you know, They've flown over the helicopters and, you know, they've shot movie cameras in there. Chuck saw the pictures. He can't, I mean, all you see is a bunch of debris, audio interference in that. You can't see no spent fuel pool. You can't see any water. So, you know, the information they will give us will not be sufficient to confirm that it is uncovered, covered, or like. Dan Dorman. Brian, this is Dan. In the John Moniger. But we'll follow that issue up and we'll ask again. Dan Dorman, Brian, I think the last heavy redaction, heavy redaction, heavy redaction, but compared to some of the plumes that we've seen coming out of Unit 3, I guess in the last 40 hours, have you guys, redaction, 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 Dave Skeen. This is Dave Skeen from everything we've seen on TV and whatever video we can look at, we've never seen any, any kind of steam or vapor coming out of Unit 4. Again, this is very indicative. Unit 4 is dry, has been dry for some time. The Japanese wistfully like to think there's something in it, but nothing of, that's sufficient enough to enact any kind of cooling. So it's just a matter of hours before these things heat up and melt down and melt through the concrete and then melt down on top of the torus. And we, we may have at Unit 4 is far worse than they're letting us believe even now. And these documents, again, are released just a couple weeks ago, not long after Obama's been reelected. Very interesting, coincidentally enough. So, again, even more damning information and more insightful as into the how serious it was at what time and how what they knew how serious it was at what time. Because by the 19th, for sure, they should have got Navy vessels out of there. On the 14th is when they had the Unit 3 explosion. At that point, if that didn't give you reason to get them out of there, I, I honestly I don't know why you ever would. Yeah, a lot of heavy read action there. Let's see. Okay, here we go, number 124. Uh, Dave Weller. This is Dave Weller from the NR team. The other supposition had looking at those is there's a potential that as the core is in a dry pool or in a dry area, it is interacting with concrete and other materials, and you can be seen some interaction that there that generates a little bit of smoke, and that might be what we are seeing. Mike Weber, yeah, there's where the gases would come off, and when that core hits the concrete. All right, guys, that's all. Just that you're aware. Again, we're talking a lot of discussion here about uh, in Unit Four, everything melting through the spent fuel melting and going right through the concrete down to the torus, down to the innards, the insides of the nuclear facility and the reactor. Dan Dorman, yeah, that's okay. I've seen that. I asked Jim Trapp to work back with the PMT and see if we can correlate back Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. My recollection is that the low pressure system came through, the wind rotated all the way around the compass and see if we can correlate that to one of these signal events like on Unit 3 or Unit 4 and see if you got it, you're on it, Larry Camper says. You got it, you're on it. We're starting to think the same thing. If you go back to the, the event you're referring to is, uh, is occurred between 314, midnight 314, and 122 on 315. That's when you had a spike that occurred with 30 rem per hour. And frankly, 
where we're reasonably, be, reasonably beginning to believe that the so-called, how did they characterize it? Lube oil fire, male participant says. Uh, let me back up real quick where it's interesting. Look at this, what he says here. Now, there, this is after the Unit 3. TEPCO is apparently calling it a lube oil fire. They're not buying that at all. They're saying there's some emanation smoke or whatever coming off of it. And look, he says the wind rotated all the way around the compass. They know that there's emanations coming off of these facilities. They also know the wind's blowing in almost every direction, a lot east, too, a lot east. But at some point, it blows in every direction. You look at some of the plume maps from TEPCO and the deposition stuff, it's headed at Tokyo, headed to the north, headed to the uh, northwest, headed east, south, southeast, all over the place, just blowing around with the wind. And the ships weren't told to get out of there. I would have said sail into the wind as far as you can. Go back around the bottom half of the world if you have to to avoid it, and then get your butt back here to the east coast, I'd say. is probably the safest place till we can determine that everything's safe. Larry Camper, you got it. You're on it. We're starting to think the same thing. They're starting to wonder where the wind's blowing and, and, and where this deposition and this stuff from Unit 3 and 4 could be going. Okay, it says, how did they characterize it? Male participant, lube oil fire. Larry Camper, yeah, the lube oil fire may very well have been, you know, something far more significant coming out of uniform because that's what we're now beginning to think. At least Don Cool and I, talking with the PMT, Protective Measure Team, you know, it may well be that, that that was a seminal event in which the volatiles were deposited out there on soil to the north-northwest of the site. And if that's the case, the good news is that the volatiles are already out there. The bad news is the thing we're all trying to chew on is what's going on in Unit 4 now in terms of any future consequences from the interaction of melted spent fuel material with concrete and so forth. Dan Dorman, it's, it's interesting to me you're focusing on that lube oil fire because Jim, Jim and I, when we were talking this morning, were focusing on the Unit 4 explosion. But I'm fuzzy in my recollection of which came first. Larry Camper, well, I, I think we're saying we're skeptical that it was a lube oil fire. Dan Dorman, yeah, I'm, we, Larry Camper, we know it wasn't a lube oil fire. We know that. They can take that off the table. Dan Dorman, yeah, I guess, I guess if, yeah, I'll be interested to see an analysis that lines up the time sequence of events compared to that wind shift because I think that obviously that wind shift to me is the only, the only, you know, Jim kind of said, well, maybe the explosion drove this big plume out there or it was a directional explosion out to the northwest. Well, I could understand that even out to a mile or two, but if, if you had an explosion that with the wind was still blowing up fee, you get a little bit of wind from the explosion it back, but not 30 kilometers. So, so I'm thinking that, that whatever, whatever was happening during that wind shift is what put that deposition out there. So we're talking about here wind shift, deposition, a worst case scenarios, presence worst case scenarios, not moving Navy ships because it would cause angst. There's plenty of evidence here, folks. Wow. Just a wealth of evidence to show it was bad enough, if nothing else, to have at least given warning and said, just get them out of there. Better safe than sorry. If it's not that bad, we'll find out, and we can always send them back in. But it's blowing around the coast, right around the coast. Larry Camper, yeah, we're thinking the exact same thing. We're all in the same place. We're ruling out lube oil of fire. I don't think any of us are buying that. Marty Virgilio, relative to the protective action guidelines type of guidance coming from Japan is people, the other thing to keep in mind is they have hundreds of thousands of people who displaced, who need food, water, and shelter. And food is food, so they might have to have different priorities than what we consider normal. Male participant, yeah. Dan Dor Dorman, I think that's a fair conclusion. Larry Camper, yeah, that's a great point. And the problem is we just don't know what their action levels are at all. That's a protective action levels he's referring to. Marty Virgilio, I understand that. Larry Camper, I mean, we certainly just don't know, you know. That's my personal observation, not any professional position, but it's one thing, Marty Virgilio. But as we consider that, we would do, they certainly have an overreaching set of concerns. Dan Dorman, inaudible. RST or the PMT, Reactor Safety Team or Protective Measures Team, a position or a conclusion regarding the the salt crystallization concern. We're getting some other stuff from DOE, but have you guys come up with a position on that? Marty Virgilio. They're still working that in the RST, Reactor Safety Team, room right now. 
John Moniger. We're, we're thinking most likely today or tomorrow, you know, we'll have a call with TEPCO to run through that. Marty Virgilio, okay. John Moniger, so that's Dan Dorman. That's a priority. John Moniger, yeah, the CNO, his, you know, number one priority is the SALT issue. Dave Herman, this is Dave Herman again. One of the things I heard was TEPCO had expressed that they wanted to switch to using fresh water. Do we have the understanding of their ability to generate water? Chuck Castro. They, they'll have to put in the desalinization process. John Moniger. They, they've also talked about bringing in, you know, trucks. And then yesterday they said there's some dam 10 kilometers away that the piping down to the plant is still intact, but we're not, you know, sure what it would be of those three. Chuck Castro. This is Castro. On the protective measures, I think the ambassador is getting most, a lot of information from DOE and AMS. And they meet when we meeting. Again, some of this language is tough here. They meet when we meet, he's trying to say. That's the meeting I just came back from. So it was, it would be helpful if we work with DOE and come up with a consolidated viewpoint. And that has been DOE, you know. They had information at that meeting that I didn't have. And I, I would prefer the two teams work together to come up with a single so that we know the DOE is going to provide them every morning. Virgilio, all right, so are you guys... Audio interference, says in parentheses. Larry Camper, just for your awareness, Tony just handed me a couple of articles from the Wall Street Journal. It's amazing how people know this staff, and we can't seem to get it. But it is what it... Let's see. Um, he Okay, that ends that. That's the end of that. Okay, next screen capture. John Moniger. Consolidated info is what I have. I just brief through this one. They're, they talk about consolidated input, consolidating information, consolidating input, being aligned, that kind of thing. Clearly, they want to make sure they get their story straight. Okay, this is okay. We're, we're looking at now is just the very final few pages of this document. The uh, high 190s in here, and I captured some of this because eventually they, they actually get into coordinates. Let me see if I can find it. And they discuss um, particular um, dosage and millirems and that kind of thing, which is kind of technical, but you look at it and clearly uh, that to the side, you can clearly see just the overall a picture of how serious the incident is. The plumes, they're talking about plumes all the time, talking about deposition, debris, that kind of what have you, miles off the coast, et cetera, et cetera. So clearly, in my mind anyway, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on this. If you guys don't see it the way I see it, it seems clear to me they should have made the call and said, yeah, you go ahead and get, you know, get everybody, get these ships out of the way. Let me look at this page 195. Um, Jim Wiggins, well, there's Yokota Air Force Base and there's Yokosuka Submarine Base, John Moniger. Yeah, I don't know which one, but we, you know, the thought is to get in touch with the Navy and figure out where they took the sample and what this write-up means. Male participant, did you mention some Navy Admiral? John Moniger, Admiral Thomas, the information is from 11.30 a.m. out here, which is approximately an hour and a half ago. Jim Wiggins, okay. Virgilio, Virgilio okay. John? John Moniger, yeah. Virgilio, we've invited our naval reactors folks into the meeting. Moniger, okay. Virgilio, and could you just review what you've got one more time? Sorry to run you through this, but I want to make sure he hears it firsthand. John Moniger, okay, so we can review it. What I'd recommend is we fax it out to within the past five minutes to the PMT, Protective Measures Team, so the PMT should be able to pull it off and you'll see the write-up. It's notes from an individual in the Navy. They hand it to us. Virgilio, okay, so it's Admiral Thomas. We're not exactly sure. Redacted, redacted, redacted. Okay, so my point why I captured this, too, and here we go. It's say down to the next page. And they took a sample, Kathy says. The same point they gave us, the latitude and longitude, is an area south of Tokyo. And again, I've been clear. I've shown plume models, and we discussed one day Tokyo. I've got an article up on Tokyo. And yes, it headed right at, you know, it just depended where the wind was blowing at the time. Wind and rain, folks. Wind and rain is what it's all about. And it's redacted there, and then John Moniger says, so thyroid dose, okay? They talk about thyroid doses. They know we were not given any kind of 
warning, you know, to take potassium iodine, very sad, very sad state. Okay. Okay, on the next page, just an interesting conversation. Uh, so Kathy says, yeah, well, what we want to do is get, get in touch with the people that actually pull their samples so we can get more information on how they pulled the sample. John Monica, right. And we concur 100% in that the notion that we talk to the Navy come to a complete understanding, and maybe there's recommendations out of that. Maybe there isn't. Big block redaction, big block redaction. Kathy, okay. So you see they're talking about getting with the Navy, letting the Navy know what they know. And this is interesting because here's a clear indication that they had these discussions, and yet there was no... Uh, move to evacuate our naval ships. And this page 198 out of their document, not out of the actual ML file, but page 198, they go into a discussion, Virgilio, uh, it says, which is clearly a level of interest. It's higher than the numbers I've heard from Moore. Kathy, I have E-7, negative male partic participant. That was about, I'm repeating your numbers, so I repeated. Kathy, 1.6 E to the power of negative 7, male participant. Okay. That's still significant, but but not. Okay, there's a, a number back here. Let me see if I can back up and find it. Well, they're discussing numbers, and the first one they say, oh, yeah, and then this one, oh, that's not as, as bad in the second one here. And they go over some particular numbers, millirems per hour, et cetera. Some of it's uh, complicated. But the overall picture in this last few pages on this doc, it's like a 200-page something document, the last... 20, 30 pages, if you read through them and familiarize yourself, you really get a clear picture about these Navy ships. I'm told the next document as well that I'm going to run into and we'll look at. Here's page, uh, I have it down as 152, RADS on Navy sample coordinates, comma, venting. Let me read this one. Male participant, we need to be clear on where that sample is collected. They talk about the sample in this last couple of pages they've collected somewhere that's significant enough to cause them to worry and cause them some angst and angst with these worst-case models as well. They don't want to have to move Navy ships. You need to understand that the mentality is what we don't want to move them because if we evacuate them and we, we do what we really should do, it's going to look really bad for nuclear power. Again, there's many uh, multiple Mark I containments over here of similar design and similar nature, and they're old, and some of ours have much more spent fuel uh, stored on site. Okay, says, uh, Kathy says, we, we have a latitude and longitude. Virgilio, can you read that to me? Kathy, 36.11.46 north, and Virgilio repeats that number. Then Kathy says, 120.16.87 east. I'm told this is south of Tokyo. Yeah, we're told that it's south of Tokyo, right there. Marty Virgilio, okay, John. If you'll engage TEPCO, John, are you there? Jim Wiggins, John Moniger, yes, sir. Virgilio, if you'll engage TEPCO on any recent venting, John Moniger, yes, we'll, if you guys let us go, we'll call TEPCO, and you guys will run this down, and you'll get in with the Navy and pull your heads together. Virgilio, okay, got it, John Moniger, got it, okay, you got the Navy, we've got TEPCO, all right, thanks. See, they're splitting up, you take, it's like Scooby-Doo, isn't it? Uh, you and Shaggy and go this way, and, and Fred always takes off with the attractive one, and we go over this way. Right? Doesn't it always work on Scooby-Doo? Same thing going here. You take Scooby, and you go talk to the Navy, and me and Thelma and Louise are going to go down, or Daphne, or whatever her name is, to go to uh, TEPCO. Right? Same kind of thing. We're splitting up, and we're going to handle it. What are they going to tell the Navy? Well, they're not going to give them their, and if they do give them the worst-case scenario, no one's acted on it. No one acted on it. I think as history is going to play back as the years go by and people look back at Fukushima, they'll come to realize that I'm just now getting out of this batch of documents. Clearly, we should have got all Navy vessels out of there. We should have begun to evacuate all military personnel. Say, hey, sorry, you can have your island back. I know it's kind of sucks that we finally leave when it gets totally radiated and it's glowing at night, okay? But we're out of here and you're going to have your island back, right? I would have pulled them all out and said, yeah, we just lost our base over there. I don't care if, if one soldier has to get cancer, it's not worth it to me. I mean, I'm sure a tactician would say, well, it's an expendable asset, acceptable losses, blah, blah, blah. But that's not, that's not the way we need to operate anymore. That's got us into the mess we're in now. Okay, here, uh, okay, I guess I'm back to the, okay, I, I covered it. This is back to the front, the first one that's disappearing off of uncovering Plume Gate. Three times, and three times I put it back, and I have to do it again. I'm going to do multiple videos and go off on this thing, so they need to just leave it alone. And, Maybe it's a glitch. I don't know. I have to 
assume that's a possibility. Okay, I covered everything I wanted to cover today. Kind of skipped over some stuff in the back, but if you you know if you have the time, read through those last 20 pages, be familiar with it, and you really get insight. You know, as to do they care about the military? Do they care about the Navy? Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, you are an expendable asset. You really are. Okay, I've covered everything in the plume gate and went a little long on that, but I wanted this was the end of that document that I spent four days on last week. It's hundreds of pages, and then this one was just page after page of amazingly insightful information. I mean, if you may have had a false idea that the government is working for you and benign and friendly, and that's not what I've found. That is not at all. I know they have programs that try to put an illusion out there that they do care and they're trying to do something for you, but that's just for show. And it always has been. It's like Blagojevich and Spitzer. I know the Justice Department has prosecuted a few bad guys along the way, but that's just for show. That was just for show. That was to appease the people such as Patrick Penny, who are saying they're not doing much down at DOG. DOJ, they're stonewalling, they're foot dragging, they want to have a judge hold up the FOIA documents pertaining to Fast and Furious and slow that little investigation down. Meanwhile, Obama's talking about a gun control, and Obama is talking about, actually, um, I got a Forbes article where he says one of his, let me bring it up here, I think I can pull this up. Uh, number Point number 14, if I'm not mistaken, issue a presidential memorandum directing the Centers for Disease Control to research the causes and prevention of gun violence. Isn't that nice now? Now, after I've told you about Plumegate, multiple agency cover-up, thousands are dead from it now, thousands and thousands more, oh, over a million in the end, uh, predicted to die from this huge plume fallout. They all knew about it. They all covered it up. You know what? I've challenged people to get me some recent cancer studies. They can't find them. You can't find them. The news the other night was very careful in ABC to say, cancer's going down. We're treating it better than ever. Wrong, 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 wrong. Those studies go to 2007, 2009. Then in 2011, 2012, they rehashed those studies and published them in 2011, 2012. But those aren't recent. There's no, I can find no, and no one's, where are they at? Who's taking the information down? Could I get a little looky, looky, look inside so I could start compiling numbers? I have friends that do statistics. Thank you very much. We'd, we'll crunch the numbers for you. Oh, it's like that. We don't get to see. Oh, you're not even doing them? I have to wonder. I really do. Because if Obama cared about children, I mean, seriously, Obama, this is for you, buddy. You know you're just a total joke, right? You don't care about the children. He, you know, if you voted for Obama, I hate to break your bubble. He does not, I repeat, not care about children. If he says he does, he's a liar. I'm calling the president of the United States a liar if that's what he's trying to convince people he cares about children. If you cared about children, you would have issued the rainwater warnings. Again, he said totally safe, nothing to worry about. Just uh, keep your eye on them for information. No big deal. West Coast not to be hit. Hawaii not to be hit. None of them. No, no big deal at all. Now he wants to do a study on gun violence for... Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me, right? Wouldn't you do a Center for Disease Control? Why don't you? Lola is trying to pop. Lola is trying to par. Oh, she just closed the door. Lola? Cat, why don't you? Oh, she's got her paw stuck in the keyhole. Hold on. Crikey. Can you get her paw out of there? It's stuck in the keyhole. <laughs> ah, Lola! <laughs> Now she's like a, she, I think she is CIA kitty because look, she has lot picking abilities and skills with a single talent. Ah, oh, that's, that is amazing. She is trying to pick the lock to the door to get in here. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I just thought it was a bit hypocritical. Obama wants a, some kind of study on gun prevention and violence when he can't fund a study on cancer from Fukushima so we can all take care of ourselves in this country and treat ourselves and take precautionary measures. You know what? He's a joke. He's a joke. The Department of Justice is a friggin' joke. It's all a big, giant joke. It's a hoax. It's an illusion. You know what? Maybe Sandy Hook was a hoax psyop and maybe kids were killed. But our government's definitely a hoax. Every day of the week, they're a hoax. Every day of the week. All right. I uh, pretty much covered it. Now, before I go today, I need to discuss my extensive... Uh, research this weekend and uh, product testing of the La Cucaraca Taco Rack because I did actually try it out, which sent to me by Nicholas. I don't really accept money or gifts or anything, but again, like I was very clear, I do have a taco addiction. I don't deny it. Okay.